this, this lighting talk is not about it, that's tomorrow. The best for the later. Well, I'm going to talk about a very forgotten model in Qt Quick. That's the particle systems. Uh, I've, been, I've been seeing these particle systems only being used for eye candy. But we found that we can do a lot of interesting things with the particle systems. And in the, I mean, in the, in the time we, we did that, we also patched some bugs we found in, in the module. So, so uh, let me introduce you first to these arrows, uh, vector fields. Um, I, mean, I don't know if, if you have, have any one of you heard about vector fields? Yeah, three or four. Well, this is just a, a matrix and represents uh, directions in, 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 the, in space, in 2D space. That's, how, that's a very simplistic way to view a vector field. So how are we using vector fields? Or how, what, what application is this? That's, that's an image from, from NASA, I guess. I don't know. I just grabbed it from the internet. But that's an application that, that is very useful to, to display with the vector fields. That's exactly the wind. And this application, uh, it all came out because we generated a wind simulation for a museum. And it all came through onto TV broadcast stations. Then I will tell you how we did it. So the arrows you see in this map just represent the direction and the magnitude of the wind. And uh, we, we had to encode this into a, in a different way in order to, to apply what we will call next a uh, wind effector for, a, for the particles. We basically use the same, the same technique that is used on 3D, a normal map. And we encode the vector field, uh, the x and the y direction, into red and green. You can see the green, the, the color green represents top. Uh, for example, the, the, the blue, the darker blue, is the left. So we really forget about C. In normal maps, you, you represent another, the, the tangent in C. but we basically put C in, in zero. That means uh, it's translated into 128. Uh, for the 000, the, the origin, we get basically the typical bluish color that you can see in the, in the background of, this, of these images. So this is just a way to represent uh, 2D vectors using colors, the red and the, and the green. And we uh, gathered information from from all over the planet, and for every for every position in the planet, we gather the wind. That information is publicly available. It's from NOAA. It's kind of difficult to parse, but there are libraries. There are open source libraries. You can you can already do that. Um, it's not well. I would say it's not difficult, but it is. It is it's kind of difficult, but it's just messy. It's not something that requires a lot of uh, intelligence to do is just something that you have to, to process and it takes a lot of CPU cycles. But once you do it, you get point information of every point in the planet uh, about not only the wind, the temperature and vorticity and uh, several other parameters. So we created a normal map effector. Once we encoded the 2D vector of the wind, we, we encoded it in, a, in a, an image. We created a custom effector for the particle system. We realized by this time that the particle system was riddled with, with bugs. So we, we patched some of them, and we created these new normal effectors. We derived a class, and basically, we, we're just affecting every particle with the direction of the wind at that position. That's, that's I think, it's, it's kind of really easy to, to do once you have both the vector and the position of the particle. So there are some patches. I think they are already in Qt uh, 5.7. So it should be easy to, for you to, to add more effectors, not only for wind, for m all many other things. Some people are already doing this. The, um, this site is famous. It, it appears even on, on TV. This is a, a wind simulation, simulation of the world. But it's kind of. Uh, it lags behind 8, 10, maybe sometimes 24 hours. It's, it lags behind in, in, the, in, the, in time. You don't have the, 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 the winds right now. So some people are already doing this kind of stuff. There's also windy TV. So that is the world right now. That is, well, not right now, but last night. This is the world. 
and one of the images we got from from our from our mining database. Maybe you don't understand the world, but that's the U.S., Australia, and last night there was vorticity near Asia. I don't know if someone is from Asia, they, they should know what's happening there. But you can see the vorticity there, that's a hurricane, or something like that. So I'm from Mexico, I'm interested in Mexico, so basically I took a slice from that map and I tried to, to display it uh, to inform people in the newscast uh, in Mexico. Let me see if this works. This is the first version. It was slow, as you can see. But uh, we did some optimizations, basically ignoring some, some uh, data. And we, we went to this. Let me see. That's the wind. It's not, this is not today. I think this is from September. But that's a hurricane. That's a Newton hurricane striking the coast of the south coast of Mexico. This, this appears on TV. This is, you can imagine a, a hot meteorologist telling you that the wind is going to blow your house and all the things. <laughs> but uh, it, in behind, you have a nice visualization with particles of how the wind is striking your house. Well, anyway. Uh, in this hurricane, there were no uh, life lost, fortunately. But I, I like to think that it's because of services like this that inform people of dangers in a meaningful manner. So let me go through. I'm almost finished. I was hoping the, for the demo to not to work, but it worked. So I was prepared with another video. I don't know if you can see this one. In, in the full software, we also have clouds and other information about the maximum and minimum temperatures, but it's not about the, the topic of, of this, this talk. So what else can, can we do? That, that's Hurricane Newton. What else can we do with custom effectors? You already saw the wind effector that affects using a normal map. And in fact, you already saw the color effector that affects color of particles based on the, on the strength of the normal map. That's why you saw some red particles. But what else can you do? There are vector fields everywhere. I don't know, has, there are, has anyone seen the demo, the interactive demo of this? No? It's, it's awesome. And it's also interactive. Yeah, you, it's, it's basically this. You take out the normal map of the, of the painting, and you can then create particles and then animate this, and then you will see paintings coming to life. That's, that is not many, maybe not that useful, but it's, it's, it's very beautiful. And that's what can be done with the particle systems in Qt that's almost forgotten, a forgotten model, but we can do useful things and nice things with it. And I have a minute left. Maybe if you have an, a question, I can answer for you. Do we have any questions from the audience? Anyone? All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Errol from EDS. Uh, great presentation. I think this is one of the cool things about Qt. It's a, a complete toolkit. You know, there's so many things and so many pieces that you can use for different purposes. Yeah. And uh, we have a great book for you here. It's on oh. copy from Gun Kelly. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs>